Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. Today, we're going back to Mudball Wall, this time on the very hard difficulty, to show off the algorithmic solution on how to beat this, and it's very simple. Not even as complicated as the previous difficulties one. So, like on every other difficulty, the first thing you want to do is fire the default mud ball it gives you. And then change just one feature. Let's change it to color red shape. Alright. So, we know from that, that pink color, that the color of the shape determines which column it fires in on the section of the wall. So purple will hit in that section, so we actually want it to be purple. Let's try to change it into a green mud ball, though. Alright! So we know now color of the mud ball determines the row it's in. So green is going to be at the very bottom, so let's change it to a different color. Alright, so now we know red is at the top. Let's make it blue. Unlucky, it's the last one I try. But that, sometimes that's what happens. So squares will hit this section of the wall. Let's tr let's see if there's a common tile between these two. Yep. So let's try to hit this one right here. So that way, regardless of the shape we have, we have a two out of four chance of hitting it in that part. So we know it's going to be a blue mud ball. It's going to be a different shape. Let's make it triangle. And we don't know what color of shape to make it, so let's make it yellow. Okay. Triangles hit that section of the wall. There are no other triangles, so we're not going to do that. Let's make it a star. And that color of the shape is wrong. Let's make it a green. Alright. Wrong shape, but that means a circle will hit right here or right there, and then the diamond will hit in the other spot. So now we should have all, pretty much all the necessary information we need. So we're going to try to hit this one next. So it's going to be a blue mud ball since it hits in that top part of the wall. It's going to be a diamond since it hits in this section of the wall. We need to figure out which column it is. So green colored shapes will go in this one. Red colored shapes will go in that one. Purple colored shapes will go in this one. And yellow colored shapes will go in that one. Which means by process of elimination, blue colored shape will hit right there. Now let's hit this mark. So we need a circle. We're going to need red to hit it up in that row. And blue colored shape should hit it right there. So it's pretty easy to figure out which, uh, which of the coordinates are going to fire where. So now we need to hit this shape. So it's going to still be a circle. It's going to be green and color green shape, and that'll hit right there. So now we have two left. Let's try to hit this one. So we're going to need a star shape one. It's still going to be a green mud ball, and we need it to be a red shape to hit in that column. So it's Christmas. Quite literally, green and red with a star on top. Alright, and then that's the last one we have to hit. It's going to be a purple colored mud ball, because that hits in the middle row. It's still going to be a star that hits over there, and it's going to be color yellow shape to hit in that last column. So, we, we got pretty unlucky at the beginning, but that's okay, because we even still had one mud ball left over. Well done! So it's pretty simple. Let's do that one more time, just to make sure everyone has the hang of it. So again, the algorithmic solution is all about figuring out which type of the coordinate affects where it hits the wall, and then figuring out what style of each type hits where on the wall. So, first mud ball. Change one thing, like let's change the mud ball color. See where it changes relative to the first one, so we can see it fired in a different row. So now we know that the color of the mud ball affects that the, the row that it goes in. 
So that's good. We also can see that there's something we need to hit that's in the green row on this section of the wall. So let's change a different coordinate. Let's say change it to a color blue shape. All right. Now we can see that fired in a different column than the previous one, which means that the color of the shape determines the column, and then by process of elimination, the shape itself determines which section of the wall it'll hit. So we still want to hit that, so we need to try a different color shape. Let's try a green colored shape. Booyah. So now we want to hit it down there. So again, we know that a square is going to hit in this section of the wall, and we know that green colored shape is going to hit in that column, so now we need to choose a different color to hit in that row. It can't be green, it can't be red, let's try a blue. Not quite. So it's either going to be orange or purple, we have a 50-50 shot. Yes! <laughs> So now we actually know which color goes to which row. Green co color green mud balls will go in the first row. By process of elimination, orange is going to go in the second, because that's the only one we ever tried. Red is going to go in the third row. Purple is going to go in the fourth row. Blue is going to go in the last row. Likewise, color of the shape, something's going to go in the first. It's either going to be purple or it's going to be red. Green is in the second column. Purple or red in the third. Blue in the fourth. Yellow in the fifth. So we need a blue mud ball. And it's going to either be red or yellow. I'm going to use red. Alright. I'm sorry, not, it's going to be red or purple, not yellow. So it's going to be purple. There we go! So we now know which color of mud ball goes in which row, and we know which color shape goes in which column. The only thing that's an unknown is which shape hits which part of the wall. And a good way to resolve this is to look at the different sections of the wall and see, is there a uh, discolored uh, section of the wall that's in the same place in two different sections? And we can see, yes, there's one in the lower right-hand section of this one, and in the lower right-hand section of that one. So lower lowest one will be a blue mud ball, Right, it's going to be yellow shape, and now we have to choose a different uh, actual shape as opposed to color shape. Let's try triangle. And that was a correct answer. Cool. And the reason I choose that specific uh, one to hit is because because it was in two different sections of the wall, and we don't know which shape corresponds to which section. Trying to hit that one gives us a 2 out of 4 chance that it'll hit it, as opposed to a 1 out of 4 chance. Slightly improved odds. Alright, let's try a star now. So that didn't quite hit, but now that we know the star hits this section of the wall, we can hit this one. So it's going to be a red mud ball in the same column, so we don't have to change that. In the same section, we don't have to change the shape. Boom. So again, we're going to try to hit that. So blue mud ball, let's make it a circle. Yes! So that means the last two ones are in this section, and that section is going to be hit by diamonds, because that's the only one we haven't tried. And let's hit this, uh, let's hit this one first. So it's going to be a purple mud ball in the third column. Third column corresponds to color red shape. So now we just have to hit that one, it's going to be in the shape of a diamond, it's going to be the color red, because it's in the middle row, and leftmost column, that's going to be purple shape. <laughs> it's the inverse of that one, that's actually kind of hilarious. Splendid job! So even if you get unlucky with this, you're still going to be able to beat it as long as you follow this general strategy. Figure out what hits the wall where, and just remember that it's consistent across each section, each row, and each column. And you'll be good. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope to see you next time. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.